Hello and welcome to a discussion about the procedural improvements to spinal cord stimulator lead anchoring. This is Forrest Oberhelman. The other contributing authors or contributors to this study were Paul Cooper, Joshua Wellington, and Shashank Dave. We'll begin with a brief overview, the background um, discussing what is a spinal cord stimulator and how does it work, the objective, the significance of the study, the method or the video demonstration and the contribution to the field. What is a spinal cord stimulator? A spinal cord stimulator is a permanent implantable device that usually goes into the lower back on either side, often called the flank region. Then the, the leads then exit the spinal cord stimulator battery and go into the spinal cord itself. Um, the, F, the spinal cord stimulator was FDA approved for the treatment of many pain disorders, including failed back surgery syndrome, as well as multiple sclerosis, some complex regional pain syndrome, type one and two, and radicular pain degenerative disc disease. And this is not an exhaustive list. There are many other indications for using this type of technology. Many of which, many of these, uh, these conditions are also uh, comorbid to the rehab population, both as a subacute inpatient, you know, subacute, a acute or inpatient and outpatient many, many years out from stroke, spinal cord injury, brain injury, or orthopedic procedure uh, that we then use this for. How does spinal cord stimulation work? It is theorized to function primarily via the gate control theory of pain. So signals are overridden by other stimulus. The leads cause a vibration sensation that dampens the pain signaling. Spinal cord stimulation stimulates specific nerves that then carry these pain signals and it alters the strength of the pain in the brain. Um, spinal cord stimulation is considered successful if 50% of pain is reduced. So in order to ensure that this permanently implanted device is warranted, there is a two week trial period to determine both location and efficacy of the implant. And so on the right, you can see that the X-ray guidance is used in order to make sure that we are at the appropriate level and to know what level that the leads are anchored at. So positioning is very important and a, a large reason that the anchoring is done is to prevent migration or movement of the leads after they're placed. The objective of this study was to provide education for uh, the lead anchoring that would ensure reliable lead placement without migration, improve the e efficacy of the spinal cord stimulation as a modality, both in the short and long term, and to prevent further surgery or interventions uh, as necessary. The significance, the procedure that you will see shortly has anecdotal, anecdotal success without issue. Um, in, a systemic, in a systematic review, uh, SCS lead migration and fracture rates were 13.2 and 9.1% respectively. There is no standardized or generalized practice for lead anchoring. Some of the companies have, the medical uh, technology or medical device companies have created anchoring devices that have inconsistent results. And uh, these anchors devices can be used, uh, can be associated with lead breakage uh, given the material usage. So here is the brief video. Uh, it's a pretty short, it's like a minute and a half. Um, thank you for your attention. Okay, so I've tied the suture to the skin, and then once there's a knot on top of the skin, I do a double overhand knot on the top of the leads. Then I just take the suture underneath in a figure of eight, and then on top, and I do another double overhand right down on the leads. And then I come underneath the leads again, crossing both sutures underneath, coming over the top to do another double overhand and pull that down. And I'm gonna do this about four times. So I'm coming underneath again, over the top, double overhand, tighten down underneath with both sutures, over to the top, double overhand, down. You can see I've got four areas of secure tightening down with a figure of eight, doing another double overhand here and making my knot. This is a very secure way 
to get the lead suture down for a trial. I've never had him move with this technique. And then we're just gonna cut that off. I'm gonna put a little derma bond right here at the entry, but you can see if I tug on these, they're not going anywhere, okay? There you go. So that was Dr. Joshua Wellington discussing the surgical procedure to anchor these leads. It should also be noted at this time that suture material has been studied and tying knots onto the leads has not demonstrated any damage to wires in terms of impedance changes or breakage in the wire itself. So the contrib contributions to the advancing evidence-based practice. So after Care Week, this demonstration video will be uploaded to YouTube in the hopes that this project will directly contribute to education and improvement of clinical care with respect to eff efficacy, accuracy, and the safety of spinal cord stimulator lead placement um, due to the better anchoring. The, the project has the ability to impact both short-term and long-term outcomes moving forward. And here are some brief references uh, that if you're interested in reading more. I appreciate your attention and thank you for listening. Have a good day.